I'm gonna go over what I do when I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a veteran. What I'm gonna show you is what every good VSO and unfortunately, every for-profit company does, except I'm gonna do it for free. Whiskey 9, Yankee, 7 November call, Robert. The first thing I do is look at everything you have service connected. What I'm really looking for are the common secondaries to your disabilities. If we identify any secondaries, the number one advice I'm going to give you is talk to your provider. Whether that's through VA healthcare or private healthcare, you need to talk to a medical doctor. What you're doing is building that medical evidence. So here's an example. If you're rated at 10% for tinnitus and we figure out that you have migraines, what you're going to want to do is set up a, an appointment with your provider and say something like, hey, every time my tinnitus acts up, I have these migraines and here are my symptoms. The second thing we're going to do is look at your service connected disabilities and see if you were underrated or your conditions have gotten worse over time and now you can put in for an increase. An example of this is if you have general anxiety dis disorder at 30%, you could potentially bring that 30 to 50, 70, or even 100%. Once we finish looking at what you are service connected for, then we're gonna look at what you've been denied. More specifically, we'll look at conditions and the reason you were denied in the first place. If you are able to get new medical evidence that combats that de denial directly, then we'll go ahead and look at supplemental claims and see if we can add those to the list as well. An example of that is if you were denied because you didn't have a diagnosis, I'd recommend you talk to your provider and get a diagnosis. Then you can submit a supplemental claim and combat that denial directly. Looking at secondary conditions and denials, this is where the conversation of independent medical opinions and disability benefits questionnaires will come up. And nine times out of 10, I don't recommend them because you probably don't need one. In cases that we do recommend that you get a ne nexus letter, I will help you find a reputable medical doctor in your area as best as I possibly can. In fact, if you need an independent medical opinion for a mental health disability, I'd more than likely recommend you to Dr. Sharma. See what I did there? Dr. Sharma has been on the channel before and you'll find his contact info below in the description. Once we finish with your denials, then the third thing we're gonna do is look at your medical records and determine if you were seen for anything in the military that you may have skipped over and didn't claim in the first place. To address a common misconception, just because you were seen in the military for something doesn't guarantee it's gonna be service connected. You still have to show the current diagnosis and the nexus. Now, does it absolutely help your case if you were seen in the military for a certain disability? Absolutely, 100%. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one meeting, I do them absolutely free. I genuinely enjoy doing them. Helping veterans kind of acts like therapy for myself. Go ahead and send me an email at thecivdiv at gmail.com. Once we talk about your service-connected disabilities and your denials, and if you miss anything that you could claim, we'll build your game plan and you can do one or two things. One, you find a VSO and I'll help you find a VSO. That's always my number one recommendation or you feel comfortable enough to do your claims yourself through va.gov. At the end of the meeting, we'll talk about submitting personal statements or buddy letters and go over any fine details that we may have missed. Increases, secondaries, and supplemental claims are how you get 100% VA disability. Not every veteran rates 100%. All I want you to do is be properly rated whatever that final percentage is.